I have to say something. I don't know if anybody knows this, the Femme Rebellion Fest. It's stolen from more or less from Spain. Friends of mine started it in Spain as a tour. It's bands, uh, mixed uh, bands with men and women and who and people who don't want to be seen as either and uh, who are pretty explicit uh, uh, about the fact that the other bands are not allowed to be for all male. Uh, so I know this for, from, I like this um, from a certain space, but um, we have a, we can mix it and it's not only female bands or all male bands. But uh, it's at least there's not all main bands. And um, we brought this uh, to Germany and said we'll do a festival where we think where we uh, take this uh, into account and we do this once a year. We brought you a small video to start about this where the people who were involved last year uh, talk about this. And we like this um, to have this insight, uh, what has been done. and. What will continue there, and uh, yeah, and this uh, video represents the quite nicely the uh, idea of the Rebellion Festival, how it should be um, not just a festival that we do and everybody is a guest, but it's a, a start for a, a hopefully grow, ever growing movement uh, and where people of all background can. Uh, get involved in this video uh, was created like that. It's a uh, documentation. It's um, it's a guy who, um, or a person who uh, visits concerts uh, and documents them and put them on, puts them on his YouTube channel. And um, it's a nice uh, example for this uh, DIY character, which is really important for our Femme Rebellion Festival as well, so that we get involved in a do-it-yourself way. So Schreibfehler created that film in this in that way. And another example for this possibility to become part of the festival is uh, that you, uh, that the Amdodak fanzine, um, who, for example, uh, yeah, um, yeah, had their last uh, uh, it, it issue in uh, that light. So this, uh, the the video was created to a last year from the second Femme Rebellion Festival. We spent three days together in a large tour bus, and the video was created on the third day. We were all very tired and all uh, very enthusiastic and really psyched about the festival because we uh, became a huge family in these three days. And um, I just would say, well, let's start the video. And uh, before we will do a quick performance, we will push the sofa to the side so that you can see better. Femme Rebellion also means action. Yes. Okay. Okay, that was a bit more action than I intended. Okay. Okay, that was the wrong display. It was a second <coughs> while we're switching to the stage monitor here. And here we go.
Okay, you've seen we had a lot of fun. We were pretty wasted afterwards, after these three days. And yeah, you heard a few statements from the bands, why they're supporting this festival, by their participation. And I would ask you, Marta, you have started this whole thing. What was your idea behind it? Well, my idea behind it, um, I, I've been carrying this idea with me for quite a long time. I think first time when I was 17 and I had a guitar in my hands, and I probably had the idea even earlier if I had more people uh, to, to uh, role models to look up on. So I'm a little older, I have to say. And in the beginning of the 90s, I was already over 17, uh, let, let's say. And it was always, today it sounds really ridiculous, but it was just like nobody did this. I didn't see any women that did it the way I imagined it. There was Madonna and, and some others like that, but that's not what I wanted. I just wanted to play the guitar, um, make the music I wanted to make. And I always longed for that. And slowly but, but surely, um, but still very tough, um, yeah, I took to it. So it took way longer than I thought it should have. Um, I always had a feeling that you need to be really good before you even go on the stage, because otherwise nobody's going to take you seriously, uh, which is not true. And things like that. So all my life I thought that those that come after me, at least, could look to me and people like me, like Elena and I, we, we made a, um, a women's band, not because we dislike men, we also play in bands with men, but it's just that if there's bands with one guy on stage, then people think the one guy is doing it all. So we thought if we're only women on stage, then there's no excuse. So I was always in the back of my head that we should be doing something, be a role model. And in our concerts, we always tried to get girls to also dare and, and do it. And for me, it's not just about women. It's about everything. It's not a typical man goes on stage and dudes around. So there's always people that, there's also men that aren't dudes or that don't act this way. There's a lot of things that aren't represented as often. And I think uh, to this day that it's not the minority. It's just they're less visible. And so these friends of mine in Spain, they started this tour with, uh, that they called Femme Rebellion. And that's where I, I took that from. And I really liked the idea because they didn't want to exclude anyone. It was just about we're playing concerts only when the other bands that are also participating have at least one female member or something that's not the typical all-male band. And I thought it was great because it doesn't exclude anyone, but it tries to include more people. So I thought it was pretty good. And then they had a festival in the Basque region where we played back then. And the end was also the beginning. It was our last concert and the beginning of Femme Rebellion in Germany, as we have it now, in Berlin, Bremen, and Hamburg. And yeah, we don't have a lot of time left, right? So yeah, in the end, that was the beginning. We brought it here and thought it's not about like, like I said earlier, it's not about us doing something and people consuming that, but it's about Femme Rebellion and really taking as a rebellion. It's called Femme Rebellion not because women do it, but because it's about the female side of us all, including the men, like Jakob here. Yeah, Jakob, why don't you say something? Well, you, you took the words from my mouth. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. So my personal motivation to participate in the Femme Rebellion Festival is exactly that, that it's about, it's about me as, um, and we got criticism that said, well, um, why, why did the Eclipsics play here? 
um, men in drag, why do they go on stage in the Femme Rebellion Festival, that doesn't, that doesn't fit. Uh, also, I've seen people think uh, that if I'm participating, then that's to support women, because there always has to be a man supporting them, they can't do it on their own, and that's ridiculous. Um, because for all people, no matter their gender or sexual orientation, it should be uh, self-evident to see themselves as feminists and to try and overcome this patriarchy, uh, patriarchal system. Because I want to live in an, uh, in a world of, of equity. I don't want to be perceived as some weird technical dude somewhere and, and uh, act in a very stereotypical way. So it should be self-evident for uh, everyone, really. There was also the uh, inverse criticism, like saying, why are you supporting specifically women's bands? They're already well established. At Facebook, there was one discussion. Maybe you can say something to that. Yeah, indeed. Um, somebody was really angry, funny enough, a woman, who said that in this day, it doesn't make sense. You don't need that anymore. She's not a musician. She's not a sound engineer. Uh, I'm both. I can say you still need this and and still way too much. There's a lot of talking about it, especially looking to this left scene. You think they, they know all of that. But like she said, how often have we heard when we played somewhere, oh, yeah, but for, for a girl's band, you're pretty good. Or things like, oh, you're 18. Or uh, you're not playing together very long, are you? And we're like, no, we're, we're making, we make punk. And I also play another band that's um, two guys and me. And I was always asked, whose girlfriend are you? Because you're carrying his guitar. And I'm like, no, that's, that's my guitar. And it's still happening in the scene today. I used to play in a band with seven men. It was great. Because in practice, we were all, uh, all equal. And then when we went uh, out to go to concerts, play concerts, I was always perceived as the girlfriend of someone. So yeah, it's still important and it would be great if more people would um, join us up we do it in Berlin in Bremen and Hamburg and after that we're so wasted we need another year to recover but if somebody feels inspired and wants to start this somewhere else also and get some support from us or, or whatever any questions um, you're very welcome you're more than welcome and as we get to the topic of questions we actually wanted to do Q&A And I can't really see the audience because of the lights, but I know there is a few people in the audience. So we would just like to ask if there's anyone here that encountered these situations. We don't want to just talk about ourselves. We want to solicit your input also. And I guess people don't dare speak up because there's so few here, but maybe you also organized something like that or played in a band so you can relate. Yeah, do you want to say something? Yeah, you can. Microphone is coming to you. Hi, my name is Sabine from Karlsruhe. Currently, my artist name is Panzarella. I've been um, doing a lot in the feminist space for a while. And I'm also a band. We have three girls and one boy. And I organized uh, Girls Attack for a while. It's a radio format by women for women with uh, female music as a platform. So um, I'm, I really feel what you're trying to do. And currently in Freiburg, we're doing the Salon Rai in the Slop Club, and we're supporting women in the cultural and uh, musical arts. And we have a pretty similar concept to yours, and that's also why I'm here. I thought maybe we can uh, chat a little bit later, network a bit, and you're definitely going to get a beer from us. And yeah, so a lot of what was said in the video is also that what I've experienced in my own life. And I think the most important really is being a role model. And I've been looking for role models for a while when I started making music as a singer. And I think in the meantime, I've reached a point where like big role models for me were Bikini Kill back then. And I think that by now, I realize that it's important to find one's own position as a woman. I 
don't just want to have the same rights as men, but I also want to have an authentic position for myself as a woman. And I guess it's a lifelong surge and journey also within the structure we're living in, in our society and culture. But yeah, I think projects like yours on also maybe Salon Riot um, help. And yeah, I just wanted to say it's the loving feminism. Yeah, I, I think that's great. Uh, there's definitely more people and, and I'm really enjoying it. If we start networking, uh, it's great. So when you say authentic, um, I'm a little irritated by the lights fluctuating. Um, so we had a similar panel earlier with a topic of uh, women being booked as DJs because they're women and not because they make great music or because they play great music. And of course, the perception could arise here that oh, we're only booking this band because it's a uh, only female band or mixed band. But no, we actually really, really love the shit out of this shit. So you've seen it's re just really great music also. All three concerts were sold out as far as I know. And the people were completely going wild. We don't book them because they're women, we book them because they make great music. And yeah, because otherwise they would not be playing as often. And also happen to be women. Um, yeah, I was asked at the earlier session, they asked, what can we do? And that's what I, what I meant earlier. Um, we, th we wondered, what can we do? Um, and first off, we want to be, we want to create role models. So you can say, okay, it's a bit artificial. We create a festival where multiple bands are playing, where we ensure that there's a lot of women represented, lots of queer people represented, or whatever, to make it seem normal, which also works, because people come, and after like half an hour, they completely immerse themselves in this world. And even if it seems artificial, now, of course, we want it to be normal at some time. And currently, you might have to force it a little bit because you have to, to, to begin somewhere. And that's what we're thinking. Yeah, start from somewhere. That would be a, a very good cue to uh, talk about our Start Next campaign. Starting today, our crowdfunding campaign has launched. And it's online to fund the next Femme Rebellion Festival. That is taking place on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of November this year in Berlin, Bremen, and Hamburg. And the campaign is online from today. I would just like to show this slide behind us. If we could just uh, flip the screen. Yeah, yeah, I got it already. There it is. So if you go to startnext.com, and we also have flyers and merch here, if you go to startnext.com and you have a little teaser video uh, that explains what the Femme Rebellion Festival is about, and you can donate and support us so we can finance the next festival. We have bands from Canada, from Brazil, from uh, Northern Greece, and of course they have to get there somewhere, somehow. And yeah, there is a bunch of, uh, of thank yous, of, of giveaways, of rewards, like t-shirts, um, bags, tickets. We also have a small merchandise booth here uh, where you can get stickers or we can also just donate. And yeah, in so far, we're indeed um, hoping to get your support and that we maybe see each other there and that we're all enjoying it ourselves. Um, another reason why we're collecting money is that we, we don't want to be paid by anyone. We don't want to be sponsored by anyone. So it's a community project, and we want uh, to exploit ourselves. So we want to, to pay for this together, but we don't want to exploit the band. So we try to give them as much as possible for their travels, um, to feed them, um, to house them. And yeah, it's, it's always quite a large bill coming together, and so we're always looking how do we get this money, how do we collect this money. So far, it works pretty well, and we're going to continue as long as people keep supporting us. So for those of you, it was, this was going f too fast for, we also have a Facebook page. So if you go to Facebook and hit the Femme Rebellion, you can also find Start Next page. Yeah, so 
please check out our merchandise, uh, talk to us, chat with us, and thank you very much. Okay, give them a big hand. Thanks from our side also.